This time last year, we were on the eve of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Yeah, for many, it was the first they'd learned what ALS really is. A fatal disease with no treatment, no cure, that can strike anyone at any time. It kills slowly, destroying your body piece by piece until you can no longer move, speak, swallow, and breathe. But through it all, your mind remains clear. That's one thing to hear that. It's another entirely to experience it. One year ago last night, we began that journey with a young mom in Waukesha. Um, hi, um, I'm Tricky Wendler. I grew up in Milton. Uh, it's a little town just south of Madison. And I, I went on to move to Milwaukee where I ran into my high school sweetheart and then we fell in love and got married and uh, started a family and I started a career shortly after with GE Healthcare and it was about a year ago in May I was working a conference for GE and after a day I started limping and the next day I continued to limp and my first step was going to the general practitioner and she recommended the neurologist next. And by that time that half hour was done, it was trick it, you probably very likely have ALS. My husband's sitting next to me and he is pale and the first thing that comes up in my mind is what, what about my babies? Most of the people, as I started to, to release this diagnosis out, were immediately on their phones looking up, what is ALS? And, or, or how, when do the, how long's the recovery on that? That was a pretty tough question to answer. It's a terminal illness. Um, there, aren't, there aren't survivors from ALS. It, is a disease that causes your brain to stop communicating to your nerves. Your nerves don't talk to your muscles anymore, and eventually you're not able to move or talk, or breathing usually becomes the biggest problem. The prognosis is, is if I'm lucky, you know, two to four years. I can feel where I'm going to lose some muscles next. It migrates from my legs up to my torso and my arms, and started to affect my swallowing and my speaking too. But um, I guess maybe the scariest part I've started to feel is this um, increased tension in my chest. It's actually caused shallowness in my breath. I really thought that my breathing was going so well that I would probably lose my ability to speak before I would lose my ability to breathe. And the arms and my fingers, that. That's scary because there's no way I can push myself into a sitting position any longer. Right now my diaphragm is starting to push up against my lungs and forcing my lung capacity to decrease. I've been wearing it probably at least four or five hours at night and then maybe three hours during the day. It's really pretty scary because you, know, you think in numbers and how much you lose every week. And if I'm losing 5% every week, how much further can I go? I tried to be a trooper to most of it, but when it got to the point where you really can't take a breath, wow, does that hit you like a brick? It's so I find an air machine. I will use it 24 hours a day. Then it helps push the air in my lungs where my muscles don't work anymore. Since I saw you last, I completely lost my left arm and my right arm. I can no longer lift them on my head. Yeah, I, I'm not able to eat now either. I can't swallow. It's pretty surreal. I feel like I'm outside my body some days. Because two years ago, I was dancing with my kids. Yeah. I still got a little fight left in me. So I, as long as I can talk about this, I will. Because there are 5,000 more people gonna be diagnosed this year with ALS, and I believe that if everybody out there really knew about ALS, because they saw what it does to somebody who's 
good, healthy mom with a good career and a great friends and then all of a sudden this different path that you can't come back from. You would all say, what can I do to help? So at this point in time, I know I draw closer to the end right now in my mind. Focuses a lot on staying alive. Dude, I wanted to show you what ALS does to, to a person's body this particular month. So I lost my, my right arm. This got really scary. Especially at night. Sometimes I wake up gasping for air. Soon I think we're getting close. So I wanted you to know. I hope my story is a lasting impression that helps others. Because I pray to God that this disease never never happens enough because they lost just to care who you are. Thank <laughs> you.